What's up guys, it's NLW here, back again with another video. This time, I am ranking every single NLW pay-per-view. Am I crazy? Perhaps. But, it's going to be a bit of a longer video. What I've wanted to do for quite a while, and it's been recommended to me a fair bit, is rank every single NLW pay-per-view I have ever done. But rather than just put it in A, B, C tier, I'm going to go through, in chronological order, and rank them from top to bottom, best to worst, so we're going to go through them, go through them from the start. So we'll start off with intensity and make our way to the most recent pay-per-view, NLW WrestleMania 4. And hopefully by the end, we'll have a definitive list of which is the best and which is the worst. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so first of all, we'll start with intensity. We'll put that on the board. This is the first ever NLW pay-per-view I ever did. And um, I'm quite proud of it looking back. Obviously, uh, it's not to the standard of today. There was no commentary. The matches were bad. Uh, it's alright. Well, I'll put it on the board. I like the hardcore title match between Tommy Dreamer, Hardcore Holly, and Paul London. I enjoyed that. Uh, Batista turning heel, Jericho and Randy Orton. That was the first ever rivalry I actually started in NLW. And then, of course, the main event of The Undertaker and John Cena. They battled for the world title, and Undertaker ended up winning. So, that's on the list at the moment. It's okay. I mean, if I was doing an actual tier list, I'd probably put it in a D, C. It's not too bad, but I've come such a long way since then. Alright, next up we got Breakdown, sequel to Intensity. The main event was a steel cage match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Undertaker vs. John Cena. Now, the animation quality in this one, rapid improvement from Intensity. Uh, this was like a year after, I think, or like a few, at least a few months. You also had the street fight between Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels. I've actually remastered that for NLW Classics with commentary this time, so do go check that out. Uh, the production quality, much better on this one. I had Ultimate X as well, AJ Styles, Kennedy, Benoit and Carlito. Love that match. And I remember the first match on that card, uh, Batista and Rey Mysterio getting like 30,000 views or something like that. And I was like, wow, yeah, this blowing up. It was blowing up at the time. And I was like, this is, this is cool. So that was kind of the first time where my channel actually started to gain a little bit of traction. And then the episode after Breakdown, I started to add commentary to it. So for that reason alone, because of the quality of it, I just have to rank it above intensity. All right, next up, we've got Uprising. I do enjoy this one. You got the main event of the Elimination Chamber for the world title. Uh, John Cena ended up winning the world title for the first time, beat Undertaker at the last minute. This is, today, the best video on my channel in terms of views. I think it's got like over, it's nearly got 900,000. We're so close to a million. If I got a million on a video, that'd be sick. But that is the most viewed video on my channel. And the second most viewed video is actually Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho. Ladder match, love that match. Aside from that, we also had an I Quit match. For the hardcore title, it was AJ Styles and Mr. Kennedy. Probably one of the most brutal matches I'd ever done. Um, and also the Intercontinental title on the line in the opener, Del Rio and Rey Mysterio. Now, it's only a five-match card, which is a lot shorter than the events I do nowadays, but back then I really wanted to keep it short and sweet. It's four parts, and um, for a long time, I thought this was my best show that I'd ever done. I mean, the views speak to themselves. I think there's, like, combined, probably, like, nearly two million views, something like that. I might be <laughs> going way high on that one, but all of them, pretty much, except for one, have over 100,000 views, which is insane. I don't know how the algorithm works to get them suggested, but... There you go. So for that reason, Uprising has to be at the top for now. Hey, we got another quite historic milestone. The first ever NLW Royal Rumble. Triple H debuting in the company, winning that match. I think Sting also debuted in that match. I have uh, re-uploaded that event as a remastered version, so do check out that 30-man rumble. I also did another match from that one, um, Del Rio and Mysterio. That's also part of the NLW Classics. Might do John Cena and Shawn Michaels as well. Again, this is the start of the Cena-Michaels feud in NLW, the first feud for Cena after he won the world title. It ended in a draw, kind of dodgy, but uh, the hardcore title match as well, one of my favourite openings. That's got, a, that's got a ton of views as well. A lot of my older videos get a lot of views, and I want to hit that peak again now that I'm actually good, because back then uh, it was alright, but it, it was a bit naff. Um, but yeah, Hardcore Holly and AJ Styles, great opener. The Del Rio Mysterio match was pretty good. Cena and Michaels again, like that match, even though if it was a bit of screw finish. And the first ever Royal Rumble match, for its significance alone, uh, I don't think it ranks higher than Uprising because of the Elimination Chamber and so many more memorable matches from that one. But the Rumble itself is historic enough in my mind to rank it. I will rank it second for now. Now we move on to Retribution, the first stop on the first road to WrestleMania. The main event was Triple H and The Undertaker stemming from their feud at the Royal Rumble. I put this on last 
A lot of people didn't know why, but the reason I did was because Sting made his return to challenge The Undertaker to a match at WrestleMania, costing him that match against Triple H. It also featured the first ever War Games match. That's also remastered on my channel, so check that out. Also had hardcore title match. First time I think I did an outside, well, I say outside. I made it look outside with um, snow and stuff like that. So Raven and Hardcore Holly battling in the snow. That was pretty cool. Also, you had Shawn Michaels and John Cena. Extreme rules for the world title. That was a hell of a match. I love that one. And then the opening match as well, Kane and Test. They were a big tag team. They were the first real monster faction that I had in NLW. They broke up and had their match. And then you had Kofi and R-Truth against Mr. Kennedy and The Miz for the tag titles. You know, I have a soft spot for this event. It was short. It was sweet. Um, I think I'll rank it above the Royal Rumble, below Uprising, because I think the Royal Rumble, apart from the Rumble itself, the matches are so-so. I think every match on Retribution delivered, but Uprising, it was shorter, it was sweeter. That was more of a turning point for me, but Retribution definitely up there. Let's rank it second. Now we come on to WrestleMania, the first ever WrestleMania I actually did. This was main evented by Triple H, beating Shawn Michaels to win the world title. He turned heel. In hindsight, I should have gone with Undertaker and Sting. It was the match that everyone was most hyped for. And I think that's probably my favourite match of this event. Again, another NLW classic that I remastered. You also had Randy Orton and Batista. I did a double turn in that match. So Batista turned face, Orton turned heel. Batista had to leave NLW. Um, also had Kurt Angle in his first NLW match against John Cena. Enjoyed that. The hardcore title match, I kind of took a couple of elements from the WrestleMania 17 hardcore title match. In that one, Raven ended up winning the hardcore title. I think he turned face in that match as well. Got thrown through a window, for goodness sake. Um, also, the first ever Money in the Bank ladder match, AJ Styles, his ascent into stardom in NLW, so that was a good match. Um, but I'll be honest, I have to say I prefer Retribution to that event because of War Games and the Extreme Rules match. Even though I think the stories are better at WrestleMania than Retribution, I do like the War Games, the Extreme Rules, and Triple H and The Undertaker. I really like the Ruthless Aggression feel to that event. So, um, might be a hot take, but I'm going to put WrestleMania just below Retribution and Uprising, but still better than Breakdown, the Rumble, and Intensity as well. All right, now we're coming on to a very, very good one. We've got Destruction, the show after WrestleMania, had Hell in a Cell, the first ever Hell in a Cell match in NLW for the world title, Triple H, throwing Shawn Michaels not only off of the cage, but through the roof. Triple H retaining that, and then last man standing, The Undertaker versus Sting, went to a draw. Also had the first singles match on pay-per-view for CM Punk, as he beat Randy Orton, but he did end up getting punted after the matchup. He was out for a bit. Also had a submission match for the Intercontinental title, Jericho and Benoit. I really enjoyed their Attitude Era matches, and I wanted to recreate them here in NLW. Also Kurt Angle and Mr. Anderson. Oh, that was a decent feud. And the opener, John Cena, his first foray into the Hardcore division, winning the Hardcore title from Raven, thus sparking probably one of my favourite feuds in NLW ever, Raven and Cena. I wanted to get Cena away from the main event, kind of utilise his heel character a bit more, rebuild him as a Hardcore athlete, and it was a good, good event. Um, uh, You know what? I'm putting it at the top. Putting it at the top better than Uprising, I think, based on animation alone. And also, you had Hell in a Cell, Last Man Standing, the Hardcore War to kick it off as well. Yeah, brilliant event. Has to be my favourite so far. Then we come into Over the Limit. I think this was around Christmas time of 2014 that I released this. Already from the opening match, you had three stages of Hell for the Intercontinental title. Jericho versus Benoit. I think it was submissions count anywhere, tables and then a ladder match. Just a fantastic match. Do watch that. It's one of my favourites. Um, a couple of other mini feuds as well. I had a lot of singles matches here. We got Randy Orton and Kane. Uh, that, that feud was okay. I wish I maybe had done something a bit different with those guys. Our truth and Kofi Kingston, their tag team blew up. So Truth beat Kingston on that night. Angle versus Styles, I enjoyed that one. Uh, the NWO teaming up for the first time on pay-per-view. Nash and the Big Show, that was the first kind of start for that feud. Uh, the NWO story arc that lasted until WrestleMania 2. Uh, Raven and John Cena, I quit match. Fantastic match. Um, and the main event, Triple H versus Undertaker versus Sting for the world title. Triple H managing to sneak a victory in that one. But this was kind of more of a build towards episode 27, which was kind of the rebranding and the triple cage match for that match. So it's tricky. I have a soft spot for this one. The matches are good, but they're not as good as some of the other ones. I think Raven versus Cena and Jericho versus Benoit are matches that you should go out of your way to see. But other than that, it, it was a fine show. I'll put it right in the middle. I'll say it's better than the Royal Rumble because I... Right, but spoiler alert, by the way. I think the shows are going to be ranking higher now because of the animation quality. 
but I am taking into consideration stories as well. Um, but I would say that Over the Limit probably better than the Royal Rumble. However, it just goes below WrestleMania. Here we got another interesting one. We got Sacrifice. This had quite an interesting match, the first and I think only to date Steel Asylum match for the X Division title, Austin Aries and a bunch of the other X Division guys. That was the first X Division title match I had on pay per view. Also, Barbed Wire Massacre for the hardcore title, Raven and John Cena. I think that was Cena's last match for quite a while. I wanted to write him out because I think it was getting a bit stale, but it was a good match to go out on. Fantastic. Uh, brutal War. That's also an NW Classics that I've remastered. In the main event, Sting beat Triple H for the world title. Elsewhere had Angle and Michaels, Jericho and Mr. Anderson had an ambulance match, Randy Orton vs. Kane. Also, to kick off the show, the start of the AJ Styles CM Punk rivalry. The match that sticks out is Barbed Wire Massacre, and the rest of the show is good. I would rank it above Over the Limit. I wouldn't say it's better than WrestleMania, but it, it's up there. It's up there, but it is better than Over the Limit. I'll put it right in the middle. Right, next up we have... Heat Wave, this was the summer of 2015. To open it up, Ultimate X, Austin Aries, Jeff Hardy, Christopher Daniels, and Sin Cara. I have quite a fondness for this pay per view, I have to say. So um, that was a fantastic high flying contest. Uh, probably the best Ultimate X match I've done. Angle and Orton fighting it out, Anderson and Raven. I think this was the debut pay per view as well of Bray Wyatt. You had AJ Styles and Shawn Michaels fighting. That's definitely an underrated classic. Uh, Jericho and Hernandez. This is around the time I was using the Intercontinental title to kind of build up. Uh, the lesser known guys like Mr. Anderson and Hernandez as well. So it kind of gives them a spotlight. Uh, NLW tag titles, the Brothers of Destruction against Kevin Nash and the Big Show. The, uh, Triple H returned at the start of this event as well. But the NWO took him out. And this is kind of an Attitude Era like Brawl that I wanted to include. And the main event, Sting versus CM Punk. Another match which I think people sleep on. Because I, I really like this match um, as a main event. Sting and CM Punk, definitely a unique feud. This is where I was trying to get away from doing the standard, you know, matches that had already been done. Like Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And moving into more fantasy matches like Sting and CM Punk. So solid main event. I would say, based on the lineup, not as good as Sacrifice. But I think it probably... I will put it below over the limit. Because the... Uh, the three stages of hell, I think, in Over the Limit kind of outweighs anything on this card. Although I do like the Ultimate X and Sting versus CM Punk, but yeah, kind of average, to be honest. But do check out AJ Styles and Shawn Michaels, because that match was pretty good. Next up, Royal Rumble 2. We had the second ever NLW Royal Rumble. Opened up, brutal, bloody steel cage match between Kurt Angle and Randy Orton. Then a no-holds-barred match between Bray Wyatt and Raven Wyatt throwing Raven off the stage, had R-Truth and Jericho for the Intercontinental title, that kind of kick-started and continued the momentum of the NWO, and it was okay, it was an alright match. Another good match, AJ Styles, the first title defence for him against Sting, again, decent match, I think he's probably had better in his title reign, and then the 30-man Royal Rumble match, The Undertaker ended up winning against the likes of CM Punk, the debut of Finn Balor, I think Shawn Michaels also turned heel in that match. So, and Batista as well, he returned. Definitely better than the first Rumble I did, and the card as well, from top to bottom, stacked show. Aside from probably Truth and Jericho, I'd say it's a solid watch. I'd say above Sacrifice, it's probably not beaten WrestleMania, but it's a very good show, so I'll put it there. Now we come on to NLW Havoc, Elimination Chamber, Michaels, Rollins, and Kevin Nash against The Resistance, inverted commas, with um, Triple H, Undertaker, and Sting. Then you had the main event, 30-minute Iron Man match, for the world title, AJ Styles just narrowly beating CM Punk. I'm going to remaster that match and upload it soon so you can rewatch it. Elsewhere, we had Kurt Angle against Finn Balor. We were supposed to have Bray Wyatt and Jeff Hardy. However, Jeff Hardy was kicked out of the building. So who was going to face Bray Wyatt? It was only his alter ego, Willow. Also, had Randy Orton facing the Sandman. That's kind of an odd one in hindsight for the hardcore title. Then he had the Young Bucks against Finley and Regal and Buried Alive to kick off the show. R-Truth beating Kane with the Intercontinental title on the line. I think on the basis of the three main matches, that being Buried Alive, Elimination Chamber and the Iron Man match, it has to rank quite highly. I'm going to put it probably just below Retribution. I reckon it was better than the first WrestleMania I did. Based on that 30-minute uh, Iron Man match alone and the effort I put into it and a couple of the other feuds as well, just above WrestleMania. Now we come on to WrestleMania 2. A lot of people think this is their favourite match, uh, I should say show, and um, I'm inclined to agree. I've remastered the entirety of it. It took ages, and I probably will never, ever do a remaster of an entire show again. But for those of you interested in watching that remastered, do check that out on my channel. Uh, it's TLC to kick off. RVD and Raven ended up beating the Young Bucks, the Brood, and the Filthy Animals. Again, massive spot fest, brilliant. First ever women's match on pay-per-view as well, with Trish Stratus winning the women's title. Had Brian and Aries for the X Division Championship. Every match on this card is, is good. It's uh, Sting and Wyatt, 
McIntyre against Angle. Last man standing between Batista and Randy Orton. Had the Hardcore Invitational, Biggie Langston winning that one. And uh, AJ Styles and The Undertaker starting their feud on a hot note. It would end up having a better match down the line, but I'll get to that in a moment. And of course, who can forget the main event, the 12-man elimination match for control of NLW. NLW beating the NWO, Jeff Hardy, and the debut of Brock Lesnar as well, CM Punk turning heel. I would say it ranks at the top at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Above Destruction. Based on the storylines alone and the fact that it was kind of a turning point for me in terms of animation, the quality of the shows, so it, it ranks highly. Now, I've pretty much gone through the first half of pay-per-views. I think I'll leave it there for now. However, I will make a part two where I rank the next set of pay-per-view events and kind of try and intersperse them in this list. It's quite a long list as it is. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button as it really helps the channel. Also, if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button as we're trying to edge closer to 30,000 subs and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Part two coming very soon. Also leave a comment. What is your thoughts on the list thus far? Do you think it's correct? Are there any that you would switch around? I'll add the newer pay-per-views at some point in the future, probably in the next week or two. So like I said, hope you enjoyed part two coming soon and I'll catch you guys later.